Paul DuPont will be leading the story. Um, Paul's a little sick, but we decided to make sure his vocal cords are rested and ready and tanned. <laughs> so, then, Wait, so, we're, we're, so okay, go ahead. So, so yeah, you I don't remember that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, no ahead. It, was, it was some dumb politician a while back who said, "I'm rested, ready, and tanned." Oh, okay, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So, Paul DuPont, you got a story to tell us? What's going on? Yeah, I do. Um, this is one of those I, I bring up uh, pretty regularly, and today's, today's a good day to bring it up, and it is Julian Assange. I think it's monumentally important that we support uh, the Free Assange movement, support the protesters that are out in London who are trying to get him freed. This is an article, it's an excellent article by Caitlin Johnstone. This has been something that she uh, has really focused on over the years. And she says, uh, tomorrow in the UK, this, this came out yesterday, she says, tomorrow in the UK, a judge will start the process of answering a very important question. It's a question that many of us uh, knew was at the heart of this debate back in 2010, 10 years ago, when this all started. It's a question uh, that they have been obfuscating, bloviating, huffily denying, smearing, gaslighting, and distracting from, basically doing anything they can to hide it from view. It's a question they don't want the public to know that we are answering, a question that goes to the heart of democracy and to the heart of the role of the fourth estate, journalism. And that question is this, should journalists and publishers be punished for exposing war crimes? And ancillary to that question, should we allow them to be punished by the, by the very people who committed those war crimes? That's what's going on here. The, the article goes into a lot of the twists and turns of, of Julian Assange and uh, what he's been up to in Belmarsh prison recently, but it also talks lots and lots about how these smear campaigns work, right? You've got people believing, oh, you know, Julian Assange shouldn't be freed because, you know, didn't you see that video of him riding a small skateboard around in the Ecuadorian embassy? And it's like, what does that... What are you talking about? What does that have to do? I hear he's smeared poop on walls. Okay, let's let's just grant you that. Let's say he did. How does that mean that journalists and publishers should be punished for exposing U.S. war crimes? What does that have to do with anything? Even if all of that stuff through is true, what if he's a complete jerk? What if he's not a nice guy? You know, what what if all of these he's so mean? You know, and he has you know partisan politics he has a political opinions and he's a journalist journalists aren't supposed to have political opinions like no 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 that's not the question none of that has anything to do with the question one piece in in this story that um you know because it's been going on for 10 years uh one piece that i i didn't know uh because I, I it had come and gone and i had missed it what i found was amazing was he's been in solitary confinement in belmarsh for a while his, he served his sentence for skipping bail for the charges that were dropped, which is a weird thing in the first place. So he's already served that term. He was awaiting the extradition hearing that starts today. Um, all those months in prison and in Belmarsh, right? In a prison, prison designed for murderers and, and uh, serial rapists and things like that. Like, why is he in a class? Of, first of all, he shouldn't even be in prison. He's just waiting a court date, Right. We have to put him in a maximum security prison. And on top of that, he spent significant amounts of time in solitary confinement. So Niels Melser of the UN has said, you know, he shows absolute signs of, of having undergone psychological torture, which solitary confinement is a type of psychological torture. But this is what I thought was amazing was the group of people that got together, made an activist stand, protested, and ultimately were able to get Julian Assange released from solitary and in, back into the prison population. We're a bunch of prisoners in Belmarsh, bunch of murderers and rapists and the highest class of criminal in the UK saw through this. And they said, here's a man who is publishing true things and is sitting in solitary confinement as a result. And they got up and protested and they got him out of solitary confinement. Now they moved him to a less populated wing than the main wing, but he now has the ability to have human contact with about 40 individuals on a regular basis which is a thing that's kind of important for humans. So uh, Julian Assange deserves all of our solidarity. Um, you will not hear about this. So first of all, there are a couple of things that, that we've got this U.S. election that's going on. And yeah, Bernie Sanders is doing it, man. And it's great. But at the same time, if we get really caught up into like the election itself and, and ignore this, this is this is important. This is the kind of thing uh, that has implications. This has implications uh, the world over. Uh, and I also want to point out that 
if you're a big Bernie supporter, there's been a clip that's been going around and it was like, how, how do we help Assange? It's like, hey, urge Bernie Sanders uh, to publicly change his position on Julian Assange, to commit to pardoning Julian Assange if he uh, ends up going through this trial before Bernie uh, could or would win. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, com ask Bernie politely and respectfully to um, commit to dropping these charges wholesale, to no longer ask for this extradition. That's the thing that we can do. We can ask Bernie to do that. Um, but yeah, this is very obviously a, the emperor has no clothes situation because they keep saying, ah, oh, Julian, bad. And it's like, no, you guys are war criminals and you're, you're really not happy that he exposed that. So... Well done, Paul, for, you know, really going into detail with that article. Look, I'm just going to say the same thing I said before. Julian Assange has no business being behind bars. What did he do that was so wrong? Oh, I don't know. Bring truth to power and inform us of U.S. war crimes and corruption that is happening overseas. Julian Assange, everyone should be screaming from the rooftop for him to be out of jail because you know what? This impacts every single independent media journalist, outlet, and yeah, CNN, Fox, ABC. This also includes you guys too, but you guys are last. And by the time that happens, if this thing is allowed to happen, if Julian Assange is allowed to go through this torture and get extradited to the United States, you know, you'll be safe for that moment, but you'll be tiptoeing on eggshells for the rest of your life because one wrong word, one wrong report, and... You're behind bars. Everyone should demand Julian Assange to be free. And I think before we move on to bring our guest onto our show, I think for a final note, I do Daniel, wanna, yeah. do, you, do you agree that he should be free? Yeah, I agree he should be free. I mean, that's obvious. But I think that there's a lot more to this because this shows the power of politics and a lot of other things. Uh, first of all, in the UK, they have a... I don't know if it's a rule or a law or something that they stand by that we will not extradite people to countries that have the death penalty. That's just like and a rule. We have that they it have. here. We have the death penalty here. And they're like, well, we have rules, but you know, the US told us to do it. So we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Uh you have again, like Paul said, you literally have Julian Assange who's waiting for trial in a maximum security prison. In America, even in America, this would be untoward. He's serving time for time that isn't, he doesn't need to be served. He just is waiting he has for no business a court being hearing. There. And even and criminals, this, even yeah, the criminals agree is, that he shouldn't it's be a, there. It's a nuts situation <laughs> that we're in where the good people in this story are murderers and rapists. Isn't that the most ironic crazy, thing that in yeah, this entire yeah. system, this entire process in the UK, which has a better, more humane prison system and trial system than the US, that the good people aren't the judges, they aren't the magistrates, I think they're called there. It isn't the prosecution, it isn't the people that uphold law, it's the murderers and rapists who are like, this guy should, like... Like, what's he... He yeah. has no business here, folks. He has no... We know evil people. We know bad people. This guy, he doesn't fit the profile. And if they could see through it, we should all be screaming on the rooftops and letting Bernie Sanders know that, yes, Julian Assange needs to be pardoned, he needs to be released, because the man is being dehumanized. So I want to just give the final word to Jerome. Oh, Ortega. no, really. All I just wanted to say was uh, wanted to say, first of all, like is very well said, Paul. And, and I think Paul really makes a good point is that, yes, there's a ton of coverage right now with Bernie. But it's also really important to know that there are other like really important things that are going on that we should be aware of.